Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Johnson, an aquatic ecologist at Ohio University, and I'd like to share a short video with you about how we collect aquatic insects and other invertebrates to do rapid assessments of stream quality in this part of the state. We use an index called the MAIS. It stands for Macroinvertebrate Aggregate Index for Streams. The method only requires an hour or two in the field, uh, family level taxonomic identification of the macroinvertebrates, and so it's very easy to perform. However, there are specific methods that we use in the field to make sure the results are comparable to other sample dates. We use this procedure mostly for surveying stream quality and for long-term monitoring of streams to detect improvement after remediation or to look at re reductions in stream quality over time due to things like chemical contamination, nutrient enrichment, or silt and sediment deposition. All of these things tend to reduce the biological diversity uh, by eliminating sensitive microinvertebrates and then you're left with a community of only tolerant taxa. So we can get an idea of the extent of impairment by sampling the macroinvertebrate community that lives at a site, and we can count the number of sensitive versus tolerant taxa and uh, some other key metrics that form a multi-metric biotic index. And so the biotic index scores give us a really easy numerical summary of the diversity and quality of the macroinvertebrate community found at that site. The equipment that we use uh, is relatively inexpensive. It includes two kinds of net. One is a one meter square kick net for sampling riffle habitats, and the other is a long-handled D-ring dip net for sampling pools, edges, and other habitats in the stream. We also uh, have a piece of plastic that we use to prevent the escape of organisms through the bottom of the kick net when we're picking it on the stream bank. You'll also need a couple of sample jars labeled kick and dip a pair of soft forceps, and then we use 70% ethanol for preserving the organisms. A tape measure is handy to measure off a 150 meter stretch for the sampling. So the first step when we get to a site is to scout and measure off 150 meters of representative stream reach that contains at least three riffles. So the riffles are easy to spot from the way the surface uh, is rippled as water moves over a shallower area of the stream. And this is often where the greatest number and diversity of macros can be found. However, there are other animals that live in microhabitats like deeper pools or emergent vegetation, root wads, woody debris, and leaf packs. So pay attention to these as you survey the stream. You'll sample them later using 20 jabs or sweep with the long-handled dip net. Next, you want to label your two sample jars, kick and dip, for the organisms that you collect using the two methods. Add a little bit of ethanol and then you're ready for your kicking. With assistance from your helper, place the kick net in a fast flowing riffle in the stream. It's usually better to hold it at about a 45 degree angle. If the water's flowing really fast, you can use stones to weigh down the bottom edge. Stand upstream and imagine, basically imagine a one meter square area upstream of the net, and you wanna use a side to side shuffle to dislodge all the stones in this one meter squared area. And then the macroinvertebrates that float up are captured in the net downstream. So be sure you've disturbed the substrate methodically and cover the entire one meter squared area. Then you can pick up the net together with your helper, lay it on the bank, and pick off all the organisms that are in the net. A piece of plastic underneath helps prevent the escape of some of the smaller taxa that might wiggle through the mesh. So using your soft forceps, you can pick off all the organisms without damaging them. Some of them, like dragonfly nymphs, are large and easy to spot, but a lot of the taxa will be really small, just a couple of millimeters long. They may be cryptic. Some of the midge larvae are small. Some of the riffle beetles don't move initially. So you have to be patient. Uh, sometimes it takes 20 to 45 minutes for two people to pick all the organisms off the net. If you have crayfish, they usually move pretty fast, and so we often count them and return them to the stream. And then also in the state of Ohio, bivalve mussels are protected. So things that look like clams or unionids, those should be identified to family and also returned unharmed to the stream. Now you're ready to start the dip net procedure. This takes a little bit more skill and practice, but your goal is to use the long-handled net to sample the non-riffle habitats, things like the edges that may have vegetation, woody debris, root wads, leaf packs at the bottoms of pools, and leaf packs in fast-flowing areas. So in all of these habitats, 
you'll find organisms that are not found in the riffle habitat. So you want to conduct 20 jabs or sweeps with the long-handled net over the entire 150 meter reach. And so what I typically do is walk along the reach and about every 10 meters stop and sample the dominant habitat there. It's easier to pick the samples from a white dishpan, so we usually empty the dip nets into a white dishpan and use the soft forceps like you did before to pick out everything that moves. And this also can take time because often you get extra organic matter that has to be checked carefully. So now you should have two jars labeled kick and dip to take back to the lab for identification. Remember before you leave your field site that you want to fill out the form for the visual habitat survey, which is basically a description of the physical properties of the stream channel, how fast the flow is, how many riffles, how much woody debris is there, characteristics of the riparian border, you know, is it forested, is it pasture, is there a full canopy, is it urban? And you can make note of any other characteristics like the amount of sediment or silt in the stream bed how many riffles there were, things that can really help you identify other potential causes of impairment beyond changes in water chemistry. Thanks for listening and I hope you found this helpful.